Hi, I'm, welcome back, I'm Trisha Fisk. Hi, and I'm Lori Lamatia. And today we're going to be talking about appreciating your power and not being afraid of your power. Um, last week, as we were talking and talking about our not being in doubt of our intentions and our desires, after I we got done with the podcast, I had sent a Trisha a, an email that says, "Well, I think we're I think we're on our way." And she sent a text back to me, "Is like uh, you think?" And I I thought that's really fascinating. Um, and when I was in meditation, I got don't be afraid of your power. And I, it felt like that would be a wonderful topic for this, this week in, in our conversations, because as soon as we put our desires into the world, or as soon as we have the courage to even articulate an art, a desire or an intention, all the doubts and everything start to creep in. And I think one of the biggest things that does happen is we start to wonder about our power. We start to step back from our power. So that's one of the reasons why we're talking today is um, we want to you know, just kind of let's talk about that head on about our power and who we are as a divine being. And I think would you she, like, yeah, I think yeah, she wanted like to start okay. with this beautiful reading that she has from the sutras. All right. So this is from the translation of the sutras from Pandit Rajmani Tigunaya, the secret of the Yoga Sutra. The secret, not just the Yoga Sutra, the secrets. Right. The, the good stuff. And the yoga, <laughs> right. The really deep stuff. <laughs> All right. So this is from Sutra 1.1, which is Atta Yoganasanam. Atta means now begins the instruction on the practice of yoga. So Patanjali begins his discourse and Patanjali is the writer of the original writer of the Yoga Sutras. Patanjali begins his discourse on yoga with a long held conviction of the sages that a human being is an island of excellence. To be born as a human is the greatest achievement and to die without knowing the essence of life the greatest loss. The immense wisdom and power buried in our body and mind is clear evidence that nothing is beyond our reach. No other creature has a brain and nervous system as evolved as ours. The retentive power of our mind is unmatched. Our ability to comprehend time, space, and the law of cause and effect, as well as our ability to store our experiences non-sequentially and retrieve them both sequentially and non-sequentially, places us above all other living beings. Our boundless intelligence and power of discernment gives us access to the infinitely vast universe inside us and outside of us. Nothing is impossible for us. We are extraordinary beings, individual islands of excellence. Wow, that that's phenomenal. Thank you. It's, it's so beautiful. And, and and how often do we think of ourselves that way as islands of excellence? Right, as excellence, period. Right. <laughs> and that we're, you know, a great achievement, that we are almost like a gift to each other. Not almost, we are a gift to each other. Um with immense power and wisdom. And, and I think it's a perfect way to start this conversation about our immensity and about our unlimitedness. And, you know, and, and for me, I could get scared of that. I can get worried that I'm not going to use it with judiciousness and discernment. Um, and I could also feel, you know, want to get small around it too. Like, oh, that, that's not me, you know, and, and to be honest, for me, that's, that's a, it's almost a cop out. It's almost like, uh, I don't, I don't really feel like I want to be all that. So I'm just going to play small. And so it's almost easier sometimes to play small than stand in your power. Yeah. Yes. And well, one of the things I do is always the, oh, I'm so big and special. And then, oh my God, what an ego 
you know, you're not talking from a divine place, you're talking from an ego place. But I think one of the things I've been reminded of this week, because we talked about wanting to talk about this, is that our soul's nature is absolutely irrepressible. And it wants to move us. It, 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 its whole being wants us to be as big and as special as we are. Our whole purpose for coming to this life in this, this particular life with this particular soul and this particular dharma is meant to be amazing and outstanding. Right. And, and, yeah. and, right. Well, and, it, and it, it, that's because we are it and it is us. And it's our mind, our mind and our, you know, like human conditioning that says, whoa, well, uh, no, you're not. And it's like, and, you know, when we're in, I, I was thinking about big Lori and little Lori, when I'm in that big Lori, you know, soul space, it's like, yeah, of course, you know, you're magnificent, you're amazing, you're great, you know, and then, and then that little Lori comes in and is like, yeah, get over yourself, yeah, you know, you can make it, <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> and then big Lori goes, hey, no, and then we're like, hey, don't you, you know, and you start to feel like, <laughs> But, you know, and that's the mind. And then you take a few breaths and then you sit back into presence and you allow yourself that moment to breathe and return to the singularity where you are that immense being. And hopefully your mind can start to sit down and allow yourself to be that which you truly are, you know, that divinity, that grace. Right, those moments in, in meditation where we reach that space and um right, it, it in some ways it feels empty because it's not me, Trisha, saying how great I am. <laughs> but it's so unlimited. It's so endless and huge and and full of divinity. How could it be anything small? Right. And I and I understand why we would be afraid of that. I understand why, as, especially in this world, when there's there is a lot of judgment and there is a lot of critiquing and analyst and, and analyt, analyzing that goes on, you know, and and you don't want to become um the you know an example of anything or of course i never i don't want to hurt anyone or anything and so we you know we keep playing i'm almost going to say the doubt game i doubt myself um but in a lot of ways that is a, a luxury in that it doesn't it doesn't allow you to move forward like you said to, you know to keep expanding cuz that's what our soul does it doesn't the idea of uh, um, limited or the idea of not valuable or not powerful, I don't even think is a concept to the soul, to, to a real divine, a divine essence. It doesn't comprehend that. So it comes here and it goes, oh, what does that feel like? Oh, now it's time to feel it and then be done, <laughs> move on, it feels like to me. I, and I, yeah, I think the the more we meditate, the more we allow ourselves to even, not just in meditation, but even just make the choice of allowing those thoughts to come in and those feelings to come in of an unlimited soul really strengthens our ability to refine that place and to get back to that place. I mean, it's just um, the, yeah, go ahead. the more, right, that with, just the more time we allow ourselves to spend in that place, the more it becomes a reality. The more, it, it, right, the more you can't even um, not allow it to become a reality. <laughs> I did a silent retreat last year and we I spent five days in silence and by the end, I, I just, my heart was so full. I felt 
like I was a walk, you know, walking divinity. I, and I, and I felt, I didn't feel superior, but I definitely felt at peace in my body. And I didn't feel like I knew better than other people or anything. I just felt so present and filled with love and gratitude. And I remember I, I got off, I went to the airport and I was just watching how people were, you know, because the first time somebody talks to you after a silent retreat, it's almost like a megaphone. Like they say your name and it's like, oh, ah, ooh, ah, that was a lot. Please don't talk so loud to me. But um, it was really, it's really interesting to float, float through the airport or float and just listen. Oh, go that way. Don't stand here. Move lanes What and just follow it. And um, I got off the plane and I got my Uber and I had this a lovely Uber driver and we had a you know really nice talk about love and respect and and by the end when I when he dropped me off I'm like is it weird if I give you a hug and he's like oh that's so weird I I was gonna ask you the same thing and and it was a moment <laughs> and I think it was brought on by this this beautiful, what I'll call power, but the power of love, the power of connection, the power of me being in my truth and space. And it just, it, it, and he felt it and he was in his, and it was a flow moment. And those kind of power moments, I think are what we crave Our, you know, we crave as humans and our souls know as, well, that's modus operandi, you know, girl, you know, <laughs> that's how I roll all the time. You just keep getting in the way. So and I'm like, okay, okay, here, let's go, you know, but, um, and so I, I do feel like there is some aspect of this that is a, when we when you stand in your presence, and that's why I think you're talking about meditation, and we always talk about meditation, because it does allow us to stand in that presence of divine power, which is different than human power. Yes, yes, absolutely. And well, and to trust it and get comfortable with it. And ultimately, speaking from personal experience, then just that, that urge like I, I want, I want to go. I want to be back there. I want more of that. Right, and there really isn't any back there, right? It's just thanks, right. mind. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna be quiet, and we're gonna go back to that ex, you know, island of excellence, which isn't really an island, but I, I think, I think the the articulation of that concept of excellence that we are a radiant being, and seeing as we feel like we're in a body, we're an island. You know, it feels like an island, but um, that place where we are in our island of excellence, if everybody was like that, you wouldn't have to fight for world peace, right? It just, it would right. just be, it would just be happening. Um, so I don't know. I'm, I think for this, our talk here is really a beautiful way for us to remember that. Mm -hmm. Yes. And keep remembering it because we do get, we get caught up in our stuff and our jobs and taking care of the things we have to take care of the endless to do list, And just right. The constant reminder that, Oh yeah, that's there too. There's this, there are these things I, you know, my to-do list has to get done, but, but this other place, this infinite place, is there too. It's there as the foundation upon which we are doing the to-do list. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The divine is there yeah. always. And it's like, oh, I better do a few things and all. And then, oh yeah. Okay. One of my teachers said, you know, you go into meditation and then all of a sudden you find peace and you feel so peaceful. And he said, well, where did the peace go? It didn't go anywhere. It was always there. You got distracted. You did some mind right. stuff. You, but the peace was always like, mm, I'm here. Mm, when you come back, I'll be still here, you know? And, <laughs> and I just, I don't know, that really helped me feel that it, it doesn't leave us. And right. technically we don't leave it, but, you know, we get distracted and feel like we get pulled away. And then we feel guilty that we got pulled away and those kind of things, but it never judges us. Right. No, no, that it's so helpful to not get caught in that spin <laughs> and just right. Not, not get caught in it and just know that, right. It's there with us all the time. 
you know, it just, it, it, the discipline, if you will, is remembering. Yes. That's remembering. Right. Sometimes I think that's like the only, if I, you know, I've been playing with this idea about tattoo wisdom, you know, every day put a different tattoo on your arm to remind you, you know, of the, the <laughs> word for the day. And I think remember is one of the biggest words is remember, you know, remember Lori, that who you are, remember what you are, remember, you know, the, the island of excellence that you are, remember this amazing uh, the wisdom and the power that is you have access to because of what you are, who you are. Um, so yeah, that remember word is is giant. Maybe everybody wants to write it on their arm and I take, take a pen. <laughs> um, yeah, and and again, and without judgment or anything like that, just remember as a grace, not a uh, scolding. Right, but it just a, a grace. Just remember, yeah. I think it's interesting that Patanjali decided to make that sutra one. You know, right before sutra one, right, one dot one, it was the beginning. Then it was, didn't come at the end. It came at the beginning. If Absolutely. You start with this, right? Because now we're going to talk about yoga, and your and his assumption is if you're going to sit and talk about yoga, then you've already had an experience, you know what this is. So we're going to talk about what an island of excellence you are. Well, maybe say something a little bit about that, because I know there's the American definition of yoga, and then I think Patanjali had a different definition of yoga. Um, well, totally, yeah, totally different. I think The practice of yoga is, as Sutra 1.2 says, yoga is the cessation of the fluctuations of the mind. Yoga is a path to samadhi, full awareness of ourselves as islands of excellence. Because the other thing that Pandaji says in that is that the greatest the saddest thing would be to not know, to live a life and not know this essence of who you are. So yoga is a system for opening this world of what yoga is to you, this world of divinity, this, this place of hmm, past subject, object, consciousness this place of infinite consciousness and awareness right and yes. it's a system it's a systematic approach to that but it's true it's not off always it's not always taught like that it is often taught like that not always but that is truly what it's about it's like a systematic approach to remembering if I were to use our terminology right now, right? It's a systematic <laughs> approach to remembering that you are in divine communion all the time with that essence. That essence is you as as walking, you know, divinity. And I was thinking that the average, you know, most people think of yoga as like a a way to just make your body health healthy. And and it is. It's it's, you know, because a healthy body and a healthy mind allows you to have access to the divine experience, but, you know, it's, it, I've always appreciated that yoga, true yoga is so much more than that. Yes, I, the, absolutely. And eat right. The systemic approach to it. You know, one of the things we were going to talk about was about the word power. Um, because mm -hmm. I, I, I know power is, it's a, it's a tough, it's a dicey word. And so I'm glad we we're talking about it because especially with respect to the power that we have to create, but the power that we have to be, you know, it have to be, not have to be. Um, I don't know when you think of the word power, what, it, what do you feel? Well, it depends, small mind, big mind, defining it. Small mind, the small I, sees it as a um, kind of a third chakra self-development thing. I suddenly figure out I have power and I go out and figure out what I want from the world. But I 
I think in, in the way we're talking about it as an island of excellence, it's just realizing that we're limitless. Mm. We're limitless. And that as power, not my ability to um, take over and grab what I want. That I see as the more ego-based definition of power. And that's why I think power is a tricky word. Right. right. But yeah, but ultimately in yoga, I believe it is right. Just we have this endless supply of energy and love and um and in that you could define that as power but again i do think love is powerful i think it is a power it's not a power over it's no power. it's a power with it's a it's a, it's a whole different energy of or, or i felt sense of power you know, it's that power of like me and my Uber driver. There was something powerful happening there that, you know, was respect and kindness and um, understanding, you know, it was transcendent almost. Um, and and maybe those powers are hard for, are elusive for people. So then they, you know, fall into the, you know, I'm going to have power you or you're going to do what I say or um and then you get stuck in, like you said, the first, second, and third chakra a little bit. But as you move into the fourth, fifth, and sixth, you can feel it being transformed and transformative. Because it's reciprocal then. Yes. Mm. As it goes into the fourth, it, it becomes reciprocal. So that it's, it's not about how much I have or owning it, right? Or having power over someone or something. It's about the ability to receive it as well. So why do you think I got the message, don't be afraid of your power? When I was thinking about us doing this podcast, why, why did I, why, where was that coming from? Well, I don't know that I can answer that for you. Well, I, I, but I heard it in meditation, like I was, play, well, I guess I heard it from the standpoint of I was playing small, like I was doubting that I, you know, that I mattered or that I had something to contribute. Um, well, and, and maybe the smaller version of it was that this is, this podcast, this us talking is a beautiful thing dependent on how it's received instead of just how it's given. Mm, right. And if it's received well, then it matters. And I matter, or I did good. I'm a good girl. And then if it's not received well, I did. I, and then I'm not a good girl. And then I, you know, I'm, I'm less than. Yeah, no, I think, I think you're right. And of course, one of the reasons why we want to do this is to share and of course to be of benefit, but that should not diminish at all how uh, you know who, uh, my opinion of me. Beautifully said, absolutely. Mm, interesting. I think that's why we were going to pull out the Marianne Williamson um, quote, right? Which was right where I was going to go <laughs> next because it's so it's so perfect for this. So Marianne Williamson. Her beautiful quote, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness that frightens, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God and your playing small doesn't serve the world. There's nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. Mm. Marianne Williamson. Yeah, 
that's she's a modern day Patanjali. <laughs> she nailed it. She is. Right? She yeah. totally nailed it. Um, yes. Yeah. Who are you not to be brilliant? You know, and and I now I'm really realigning my f- definite my felt sense understanding of power too because I do know that when we are in our power like this. We are inspiring, you know, into each other and and hopefully to other people. But when you are in your full essence, you in your full radiant power, you probably are inspiring and and motivating and exciting. And and of course, you're interesting, too. There's all kinds of wonderful things that come from being your most fabulous, as Marianne said. (laughs) Right. Well, think of that conversation you had with the Uber driver. How many people does he have in his car a day that he wouldn't want to hug? <laughs> yeah, right. Is that right? That inspiration, that that place that you were in, that space that you were in, your essence allowed him to be in his essence with you. Right. And I thought about that, how he was obviously in some kind of aligned state that even made our our connection possible, you know, and, and I think that's what another aspect of our power is it becomes and power. I'll just stick with our word, but it, it, it attracts different things, you know, when it, depending on where you're at, you know, we're always in a, an attractive mode, you know, what you attract is more about, you know, it, it, that's a power too. you know, you can attract trouble as much as you could attract grace right. and joy and right. prosperity, but and that's where I think we, you know, going back to that whole another aspect of the power that came up about last week is we do have the power to create and by how we vibrate or how, what kind of energy we are, you know, aligned with and vibrating, we are powerful that way too. Absolutely. Right. And we do, we are creating all the time, whether we're conscious of it or not, we, right. we really are, we're attracting to us or repelling from us right. all the time. Yeah. So the, this power, if you will, is being conscious about what you're creating and where your, where your head is at and what you're, pro- you know, what you're projecting out into the world. It's being mindful of that all the time. And again, knowing I can, I can change. I can change my thoughts. I can go from, oh, this life sucks and everything sucks and everybody around me sucks to, to what a beautiful space this is and what opportunities there are here for love and, and this conversation that, you know, allowing your essence to come out and seeing the essence of those who are around you. Right. It can pretty quickly go from islands of misery to islands of excellence. <laughs> right. <laughs> Almost yes. instantaneously. Yeah. Yes. So, and you know, when you were saying that, I was th- thinking about, you know, not doubting our power and not a lot, you know, and staying in those moments and, and allowing ourselves the grace to, to realize, hey, you know, you could shift in and out, shift in and out, but it really, it's always there. It's always available to you. That um, amazing, brilliance, fabulousness, just like peace is always there, you know, and you just shift back and that's okay. That's part of human is, you know, you shift in and out, shift in and out, but at some point, yeah, hopefully you're shifting it. You're in more than you're out. Well, habits, we habits are made by repetitive behaviors, right? So if the repetitive behavior is to remember, then that becomes the new habit. Yes. I think that is probably a perfect way to wrap this up. This week, right on your arm, remember. And remember (laughs) why you wrote remember on your arm in the first place, you know. Especially if you do it in magic marker and it won't come off. Right. (laughs) I didn't put remember on my hand there. But yeah, the the remember the, the remember the power appreciate the power but remember that divine essence that you are is always there and it's always available and it's always an ex, you know a, a miraculous fabulousness and don't doubt it and don't 
be afraid of that power that is you, that is your birthright, that is who you really are. Swaha. Swaha. That's it. Swaha. Swaha. <laughs> it is. It is what it is. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Right. Yeah. Happy New Year. Right. Right. Happy New Year.